What do we leave loose? Shall we get started? This right here is a brand new bike. I have seen, turn this off. This is a real fun bike build video, but first I need to let you know that it is sponsored by Jensen USA. Jensen supports me really well and anything you purchase at the below links from Jensen will directly help out this channel. In addition to Jensen, I'm supported by Ibis Cycles, PNW Components, Industry 9, and Ride Shimano. All right, let's get this bike put together. Right here, we've got a brand new Ibis bike. I believe it's called the Mojo 4. This should be a short travel, 27.5 trail bike. I think I've got all the parts here, sort of. Zero calories. It's either a bubble water or a Michelob Ultra. I don't know. They always drink something in these videos. Ooh. What color do you think it's gonna be? Um, something weird. <laughs> something weird? All right, everyone, Logan's guessing this is something weird. Iris colors are always just... He means amazing. Different. Different. I can never decide if I love or hate them. It's like either really nice or it's like, I don't know. How would you feel if Ivis said that about you? <laughs> I would agree with him. <laughs> Ooh. That's pretty cool. That's, I like the orange. That pops nicely. Dude, what? This thing looks sweet. This thing is light. A Cane Creek 40 series headset, ride more, work less. I could go for riding less because my legs are tired from daily vlogging lots and lots of bike rides. Ooh, seat post, beautiful, I think. PNW stickers. My daughter is gonna love those. Oh, nice! I didn't think this was a seat post because it's so small, but if they ship it collapsed, then it's not gonna take up all that space. This is the Rainier IR. This has a travel adjust feature and it's a 200 mil drop. And on this size medium frame, I should be able to run a full 200 mil drop because why would you wanna run anything less than 200 if you can fit 200? This right here is a shim that you turn inside the seat post to adjust how much travel you want it to have. So in case you're kind of between 170, 200 mils a drop in terms of your max saddle height, but not being too high, you can play with this to get your saddle height dialed in. So the seat post could be a 190, it could be a 180, it could kind of be anything. Genius engineering. All right, first part you're going on the bike. Cool, nice tight fit. Somehow nobody complained we didn't use a torque wrench in the last video. And then I found a good deal on a kind of a torque wrench thing. So we'll use a torque wrench. I managed to get my grubby little mitts on a RockShox Super Deluxe, thanks to the engineering department at IBIS. And that's because we don't have any Fox shocks kicking around right now. So this is a temporary stand-in shock and it looks pretty sweet. I wanted to get something with a reservoir because shocks tend to get hot on smaller bikes and you're really pounding them. And I've got some volume reducers to throw in here and make her more aggressive. Cool. Barely fits. Ah! Oh! Come on, get out. <laughs> well, it's kind of difficult to install your shock with this Allen key, apparently. I'm gonna find one of the smaller L. That's the difference. So I got a brand new Titan S2 six mil hex key. It's not gonna fit, it's too tall. Luckily, Logan, who's holding the camera, has a proper USA made Allen six millimeter key that he has ground the heck out of over the years to keep fresh. This should fit. Note to all y'all, so as you're building this bike, you might need to hit up Logan to borrow his Allen wrench so you can tighten your shock. Send me an email and I'll connect you to him. We actually have a bit of a top secret project when it comes to installing the fork. I think we should just get to it right now and then we can do the whole front end at once. Next step. Forget your 10 mil wrench at home and borrow Logan's. Crack her open. And then you need a soft rubber mallet to pop that. This might work. 
That's not soft or rubber. <laughs> I think oil is going to come out of this. And luckily our hammer happens to be a 32 millimeter laser precision cut wrench on the other end. So I think we can crack this guy open. Yes, we can. Did a very professional video about adjusting your fork travel. And I will link to it in the YouTube card right here. Jensen USA has the actual tool you want to use for this. Surprisingly, the hammer does pretty well. Fox doesn't make a 36 140 fork, so I took my 36170 Grip 2. It's a 2020 fork, basically brand new. And I'm throwing on a 140 Travel air spring. So it's gonna be a 36140 Grip 2 fork. Should be a very stiff, very plush, very capable front end. And with that super deluxe rear shock, should make that little bike ride like it has almost a little bit more travel. You don't have any 15 mil sockets, do you? No. Crush washer. Let's rescue that. Yeah, I wanted to snap my fingers and have this be done. Oh, look at that. There we go. Oh, you gotta pull this thingy out, huh? A little circlet. I remember this being a lot easier to watch in a video than to do in real life. Oh, you know you wanna pop out, little circlet thing. Oh, come on, that was so close. Everyone tells me in my how-to video I use too much slick honey. I just got this fork from Fox like three weeks ago. It's brand new. This is how much slick honey comes stock in your Fox fork. So you can put quite a bit in there and it'll be fine. I feel like this is missing parts compared to the other one, but I don't know. Cool, that's plenty of slick honey. Or if you're a YouTube commenter, it's way too much. I don't know if we have any Fox fork oil here. I might. Oh, I'm the smartest man alive. 20 weight gold fork oil. And I've even got a clean syringe to use with this. All right, what do I do next? Put the lowers back on, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. I do this like once every year or two, so I'm not exactly top of my game. Oh, a little mini fork. Cool. How much oil do you add? Before we put the lowers back on, we're gonna put three cc's of oil into the air spring set. So I got my syringe. One, Whoever two, made this video is really cool. Let's do that. <laughs> Five, four, it's about three. Okay. That wasn't quite as cool as I thought it would be. You're gonna to wanna to grab your torque wrench and tighten this to 24 Newton meters. Where's my torque wrench? Oh yes, I use my hammer as a torque wrench on occasion. Normally my move is to tighten this until it rounds off the edges. And you can do that three times. That's probably pretty close. Put about 75 PSI in here. Ten. Ten and forty. Cool. That was a good video. Who's ready? I'm ready. All right. Woo. Okay. Still clicks. I always get really scared at first because the damn thing doesn't work until the oil gets where it needs to go. This feels appropriate. I think we're okay. <laughs> I think if you're doing a dream build video the way you're supposed to do them, you're not supposed to show any emotion and you're not supposed to do anything where you're unsure of what's actually gonna happen. Oops. I wanna use more classical music. I feel like the majority of this video is really just putting in the headset. It's the part people actually want to watch. At least that's what you think when you're making a video. So we're going to need a stem. I think this is the new range stem. Ooh. 
Nice. This thing looks good. Quite a change from the old one. Brand new headset bearing. All right. Oh. Macrad spacer. Evelina's bike seat. All right. <laughs> Almost pulled a Walmart. <laughs> All right, and then you tighten these down so the top has no gap, and then you use the bottoms torque to spec. And we can use our torque wrench, sweet. Validates buying that Lazine torque wrench. I try to run my bars like roughly parallel with the fork. So we can go tab four. Dude, we're gonna be so pro. Five, oh six. Yeah, I think next, hang all the parts. So brakes, shifter, derailleur, loam lever, crank set. And then we'll do the wheels. And once the wheels are on it, we'll shorten the brake lines, cut the shift housing, cut the handlebars, put a saddle on it. Shimano is a great sponsor. Thanks to them for hooking it up with a sweet drivetrain. So right here we have Shimano's IQ test in a bag. If you can figure out how to mount the iSpec to your brake lever on the first try, you are certifiably genius. See, you would think it goes this way. I do think it goes that way. Maybe. Is that actually it? It never happens. Does P and W have an I spec? What? That'd be a nice upgrade. Whoa. Nice action. So I might have gotten one IQ test right. I definitely got the other IQ test wrong. Everyone's give a big shout out to PNW Components for coming out with the iSpec adapter for the loam lever. The loam lever is a really cool piece of equipment. Super comfortable, does what it needs to do, isn't too expensive, things are sweet. The fact that it integrates that cleanly, the Shimano lever, oh, that's rad. That also means you have much more space for a bell so everyone can know you're coming. Yes. Do you have a bell on your bike, Logan? Come on, toes get out of there. I just put the rear brake on the front. Ah! <laughs> if anyone else has ever put the wrong caliper on the wrong end of the bike, drop me a comment below. I never make mistakes when I'm building bikes. It's all pro all the time. Look at that, it's routed. No need for zip ties. Easy, painless, no swearing, no digging around with gynecological equipment to find the cable in the open tube. It's the way it should be. Maybe this is like a wash tub base. Mojo 4 two-step. And we gotta do our cables after we cut our bars down and cut our bars down. We need wheels on here and put wheels on here. Might as well put the cranks on here, so. Thank you E13 for the sweet chain guides. I think this is a cool design. It's just a keyed interface, it snaps right in here. And then if you do use your bash guard and you mess everything up, you can just put a new ISCG tab on. Oh yeah, check this out. Our hammer doubles as a bottom bracket installation tool. There we go. Dude, how cool is that? This hammer has multiple uses. You guys should get one. Cool. Oh, we could have used this to remove the foot nut on the fork. It's a 15. It's a wild looking hammer. So Shimano sent some XT cranks and I requested 165 length, real small for a small bike for shredding on small trails. Oh, I should run an online giveaway for these bottom bracket tools that keep accumulating. Got a 34 tooth ring for this little bike. And then luckily this hammer happens to install chain rings even. I feel like this is the most important tool of today. Back in the day, you were so lucky if you could get a chain guide on without pulling out an angle grinder. There was like no consistency with ISCG specs. And then Dave Weigel, who made the suspension on this bike, he created with some other folks, the ISCG 05 standard, which we're still using. And life has been much easier than it was. All right, Industry 9 wheels, brand new. Let's check these things out. 
Before I do anything else, I'm gonna label these spokes so I know what they are in six months when I need them. Yes! Dude, somehow I requested orange spokes for these. Orange and, go orange and gold, it's gonna be cool. Sick, those look good. They're gonna look real good on here, cool. Industry 9's been sponsoring me for going on two years now. They make some top-notch stuff. They have a relationship with We Are One Composites up in Kamloops, BC. You all met the guy who runs it, Dustin Adams, in the Local Loam episode. So this wheel set uses We Are One carbon rims with Industry 9 wheel system, so aluminum spokes that thread all the way down to the hub. And it makes a super stiff, quite lightweight wheel setup. 31 inner width. Cool. I used to work at this company, WTB, and they sent me a bunch of tires recently, so big shout out to them, thanks for that. I'm gonna run the Vigilante 2.5 up front with the Judge 2.4 and back. I'm using tough casing, so two plies. It's super burly. These weigh like, I don't even know, 1,300 grams a piece, but they don't go flat. And when you're running lightweight carbon wheels, you wanna have burly tires to keep everything safe and sound. The carbon rims being lighter offsets the weight of the heavier tires. Maybe one day I'll learn how to install tires correctly, but until then, I'm gonna do it the wrong way according to the commenters that have never done it. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you're wrong. Oh. Sick! Oh, whoa, look at that. Check this thing. I don't wanna to get too close to it in case it jumps. Smart little guy. You got him? Bye bye. Cool. All right, almost done. If anyone wants a glamorous job of helping me take care of my recycling and sweeping out my shop and all that, AKA an internship, drop me a note below. I promise you'll learn lots of valuable life skills. If someone is really good with Adobe Premiere Pro, then we could sort out a paid internship. True story, I was trying to get the sh my shifting dialed in the other day and I realized I had misplaced one of these spacers. <laughs> I wish I had my cordless uh, impact driver. Okay, now, critical step, cut the handlebars down, but our cutting guide is at Logan's house, so we're gonna have to free ball it. So we're gonna cut this right at Kyle Warner's preferred width of 760. Just one, and then my favorite tool in the whole shop, this guy. You know what? No, the favorite tool in the shop is the hammer we've been using today. Pro tip, a little bit of carbon fiber assembly paste inside your grips, they won't rotate. If you ride like a gorilla, like I do, sometimes your grips will rotate. Boink. Whole point of these videos is to show everyone how cool your tools are, right? Ah! Oh, how satisfying was that click? It's a pretty happy feeling break. Pretty good. Bike almost done. This is the hardest part when you're like 90% of the way there and you're looking at it and you just want to ride it, but there's still more wrenches to turn and your thumbs are sore, your fingers are sore. You just want to take a nap. You want to drink another cold beverage. You want to have some chocolate. Nope, work on your bike. Saint pedal, which is freaking sweet. Does anybody run these pedals with the smaller pins? I, it used to be the only eight millimeter bolt on your bike was the crank arms and your pedals were six, and there was six on your stem maybe, on your seat post. Now, the only eight mil is your pedals. Oh, and before we're done with this bike build, there's one sneaky little thing I've got stashed away that could be the coolest thing ever. It's called a pork chop bag. 
This is where I stash my spare derailleur hangers. Apparently I already used this spare derailleur hanger. Open this up, you can keep all your important stuff in here, like snacks. I have to give PNW a big shout out here. You just take the barrel end of your shift cable and it just fits right in there. That's all you gotta do. So easy. This is, I kinda wanna leave this. This is a tribute to Yoan. Hey man, did you get the big up with that brake lever? I think that's it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh geez. have a bike. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This bike actually went together pretty easy. If you want to learn more about the Mojo 4, one of my best sponsors, Jensen USA, who sponsored this video, has Mojo 4s. You can get them through Jensen. Click the link below in the YouTube description to go over to the Jensen USA website, read all the details on this bike. And if you want to order one, Jensen's a great spot to get a new Ibis bike. Trickiest part is adjusting the travel and the fork. But now we've got perhaps the most custom Mojo 4 in existence. I'm excited to get this thing out and about, especially on the more natural trails. Getting into the steep and deep, I can probably do it on this bike, but it's built more to be an all around trail bike. And that's a fun type of riding to do. Quick question to all of you. Were you expecting Ibis to release a short travel 27.5 trail bike in the middle of 2020? I wasn't, I thought it would be more of like a 29er, maybe super long travel, but no, this is kind of a cool direction. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash that subscribe button. I'll see you in the comments and on the trails. Peace.